I knew from the beginning of making this channel that I wanted part of it to include me interviewing other creatives about their artistic process. And I wanted to try and interview as many creative people as I could that weren't necessarily in comics. I am always kind of looking for inspiration outside of my own medium. And I, in some ways, am kind of doing this selfishly to see if there's some sort of crossover or things that I can learn from other people making things that aren't comics related into me having, getting some inspiration or some ideas or even just some like peace of mind that other creators are going through the same thing that I and we as comic book creators are all going through. So my first kind of foray and venture into this is with a musician. His name is Matt Knox. Matt is a one of the guitarists of the band Horrendous and uh, another band, The Silver. I've been listening to Horrendous specifically since like 2014. And I'm not just saying this because he's on the show. They're one of my favorite metal bands of all time. Like top three, top five, easy. Uh, the riffs are so good. They kind of push against the boundaries of what I feel like death metal is and can be. And it's just really exciting to listen to. Music is something that we get kind of get into this in the show, but that is almost like an escape for him and a way for him to have this creative outlet that's really positive. I am so thankful to Matt for his time. He gave us like 40, 50 minutes. Uh, we talk about a bunch of different things. I Please, before you listen to this interview, please go and listen to some of his music. Um, I'm going to put a link below. Please, please just like listen to a few tracks before you listen to this show because I think it will really help inform more of the context behind everything. Um, thank you, Matt. Please enjoy the show. And uh, let's let's get I don't know let's do it. Um, welcome to the first episode uh, of Something From Nothing with uh, an official guest. We have Matt Knox here from the band Horrendous. Uh, Matt, welcome. <laughs> I'm actually kind of nervous because I've never um, actually interviewed someone officially. And uh, I'm glad that you're the first person because I have to bring my A game because you're like in one of my favorite bands. Uh, <laughs> and for the for the listeners, the, the watchers, Matt and I actually met in Chicago when you came to visit. Yep. Um, and I had my fanboy moment multiple times. So uh, we've, we're moving past that. Um, I'm a huge fan of Horrendous. I think I really started falling in love with you guys around 2015. Um, this is when it, Ichdysis came out, correct? Uh, yep. So 20, 2014 was that, and then 2015 was Anaretta. Oh, uh, Anaretta. That's right. Okay. Um, and then more recently, your record Idol, correct? That was 2017? Yeah, and that, I think, was 2018? I'm was not, it 20, okay. just, Yeah, I think it's 2018. Um, I'm, I'm behind on everything a year. And then you're also part of a new band. Tell us about that, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. So the other band is called The Silver and pretty much started out of a desire just to like make music with some other people in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, we had been friends with Enrique Sagarnaga. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but he's in like Crip Sermon, some other projects. And uh, just from hanging out and like meeting people in Philly over the years, we kind of wanted to branch out and do, do some new stuff. So that band is kind of like, we try not to call it a black metal band, but I think <laughs> most people who would hear it would, would say that, um, there's definitely a lot of black metal elements there, but we try to add mm. some other stuff, like some progressive elements, some kind of like goth elements, some, I don't know, dark rock elements or something. <laughs> um, and that just came out as well in October. So we're excited about that. So I actually spun that record like three times in preparation for the interview today. Um, Cause I I've listened to the horrendous records. I mean, count countless, countless times. Um, and I wanted to hear kind of the difference between the two, knowing that, you know, you were part of both bands. Um, and I guess my first question I kind of wanted to ask 
about this kind of new um, musical venture for you relative to horrendous um, in the context of my own work. So when I'm working on a project, like a visual project, I'll find that, um, you know, I'll get really into a rut and not in a bad rut, but like a creative mindset with the tone of the book and the characters and the way they look and how even they may talk or how the action is presented. And I'll find that when I move to a new project, like I finished, you know, issue five of a five issue mini series, and I go to new characters and a new tone and a new place, new genre, uh, I find that I kind of bring my old project with me into the new. And I was wondering if that also happens musically and if that's a, a good thing or if it's whatever a thing it is. And, uh, if that even happens. That's a great question. I'm I, always actually been curious about like specifically with writing, like how one does that. Cause I think you as especially a comic book artist and creator, like you truly are building completely new worlds and like new <laughs> visual aesthetics and like characters. And like, I always find it, I, I feel like it would be impossible to create a character that doesn't look like every other character you've seen before. <laughs> Um, but musically speaking, it's interesting because I think like there's an element of music just as, as I imagine there is with any other art form where like the more that you hone your craft and the more you play your instrument, you kind of like inescapably shape your own sound and like Mm -hmm. you are inescapably you, I think the more that you, you do what you do creatively. And for me, I think if you're listening to like the silver, I do think that comes through in a way where it's like, this is probably the same guitar player. And it's not necessarily because we're playing similar sounding things or like approaching it in the same way. But I think there is some distinct like flavor that you would naturally get the more that you do something. And, and that always shines through. And I think though we didn't set out to make this band sound anything like uh, horrendous does. And I, I truthfully don't think it does. I think it's very different. Agreed. I do. I do think it's, you're still able to tell that similar people were involved. It's mm. like, okay, maybe the same spirit or the same thing that's like behind the veil is there, whatever that is. I remember talking with my wife because I was having some uh, artistic anxiety about this very issue when moving on to like a new project. I was finding, I, I again, I was like bringing over my old self into the this new thing. And my wife, Rachel, had this like really wise take. She's like, um, the uh, director, the movie director um, who does like Moonrise Kingdom. And uh, it's a shame. I'm so ashamed. I can't remember his name right now. I'm under pressure. Uh, Wes, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. So, okay. I'm, they- I'm ashamed to like know that. <laughs> <laughs> I love Wes Anderson. Full stop. Um but, you know, every time you walk into the movie theater to a Wes Anderson movie, it's like, you know what you're going to get. Um, but he's like taking that and, and applying it to new in new lenses, you know, a new thing. So I really like that your response to that, because I like how you are treating yourself as the singular entity. And it's not so much about you changing, but rather you just dropping yourself into a new setting where you can maybe find yourself uh in new ways and grow in the process i don't know that's a bunch of hooey who knows no Uh, no i i I think that's exactly it and i i think when it comes to music or art i i've always felt like following certain bands there's always this point in time or like for most bands where like what they're doing just stops being fresh and stops Mm -hmm. being interesting and i think that's partly why i think when you're creating I think there is a need as you're developing to always be dropped into new kinds of worlds and to mm. allow yourself to be dropped into new worlds. And which it's really funny in the metal worlds. So I feel like the minute you start doing that, people get really mad because you're not <laughs> releasing like the same exact thing that you did. But right. as, as someone who makes, I think that's the only way to, to keep it from being stagnant mm. and uh, to keep inspiration going is to like allow yourself new worlds and tools to play with basically, or else inevitably you're going to end up, car- you can't carve the same thing twice. Right. And have it be like equally amazing, I think. So I love that like new worlds comment that you're making. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, a little bit of background uh, for, you i guess i probably should have done this when we started but i mean for those of my listeners and viewers that don't know who we'll just 
use horrendous for, for right now, but who don't maybe know who horrendous is, how would you describe yourself and your band and your creative entity? That's a very highbrow way to say it, but just maybe introduce us to yourself and your world. Okay, so I... Um, <laughs> no pressure. So I think it makes the most sense maybe to go back in time to like when I started creating. And I think that, cause I, I think one of the things that people mistake is like when you're, when you have someone or a band or like an artist that you really like, like there's this assumption that the first public thing that they've done is like when they started, and they're like, <laughs> Oh, look at them. Like they, they're, they're so good. Like right. they, they just created this first thing. And I think, myself as as someone who who wanted to create started like back in sixth grade is when i started playing guitar oh awesome and i don't know why i had such like a desire to do that i remember going to guitar lessons and the guy obviously like you would learn some songs to kind of learn techniques and do things like that but i like really quickly wanted to move into writing our own stuff and kind of convinced my uh brother to get a bass and then another friend who i actually live with right now who's my roommate uh to get drums and we like started a band when i was 12 and that's that's kind of where the the world making started i think awesome. um and i don't i think there's something really freeing in having having the space to make regardless of like what what the end goal is at the end of the day uh, so fast forward from there, when I was like 19 is when Horrendous formed and kind of started playing and jamming. And in my ridiculous style and fashion, after like playing together twice, um, I booked us a show and was like, OK, now we have to like write a bunch of songs <laughs> so we can play. Um, so that's how the band kind of started. And though we initially started as, as more of an old school death metal band, I think we've progressed since then most people would say that we're like a progressive death metal band or something uh or like a lot of people compare us to death or something like that mm -hmm. which i don't i don't see too many comparisons there but i think that's <laughs> what what most would say sure um and i think at this point in time something i i really like about our band is i feel like we are approaching a space that sounds like uniquely ourselves mm. and the sound that hearing like the new songs that we're working on, for example, now it's just nobody else could have made these songs and not because they're like incredibly difficult or something, but just because we as people have, have all evolved creatively to a certain space where it's like this, our, our voices are, are so unique at this point. And I, I'm really proud of that. That's something that I'm a little <clears throat> jealous is not the right word, but again, I'll relate it back to comic book making. There are exceptions to this rule, but for a lot of comic book artists, it is a little bit more of when an artist approaches a script that a writer has made, there is a little bit an element of a hiring out, right? Like the world has already been set in the writer's mind, um, that all the mechanics and everything and how it works and even some of the visuals are in the uh, writer's mind and it's in a script and the artist is then kind of approaching the script in a way that can be uh you know uh, working together it can be a syner synergy like relationship uh but those kinds of real collaborative spaces in comics i think are rarer than a lot of people realize um and i've had great relation i've had great like synergistic relationships and not so great synergistic synergistic relationships but it feels like with music uh, and it kind of working together as a band, that collaborative process, it like it has to be amazing, otherwise it doesn't really work. Is that true? Would you say? It's definitely true, and I, I think we've been excessively, like absurdly lucky that for the most part, the four of us really do agree and kind of come from the same space and and are have a shared vision in a way that I think a lot of bands don't. I think mm. most bands. There might be one person that has like a really deep vision and then the rest of the people kind of just have to follow along and i, I think for us partly just because maybe my brother's in the band i think that has a lot to do with it but plays drums um yes so there is there's just a lot of agreement and where we're headed and a lot of freedom to kind of experiment and everybody's open to each other's ideas in a way that i, I think doesn't 
always exists musically, which is difficult. Mm, totally. Um, at the same time, you know, it's also easy for me to uh, not have to be in conflict with anyone because I'm just working by myself all the time, uh, which is a double-edged sword. You know, I feel like sometimes it's harder for me as an artist to be pushed into new ventures, into new things, into new styles, and into new ways of thinking. Uh, but at the same time, it's it can also be very comfortable and, and uh, easy to make things and get things out the door. So uh, double-edged sword with both things, I suppose. But going back back to uh kind of your history and and you picking up guitar in sixth grade i don't really want to ask you necessarily like what your influences are but if there was you kind of touched on it a little bit was there anything at all that you can remember that was the impetus for you seeing something and getting that like urge to be like i'm gonna pick up this guitar and try to make something happen do you remember at all what that might have been I do, 100%. So oh, right I on. had a family friend growing up um, who was a, quite a bit older. He's probably like five or six years older than me. So at that time, it was a, a significant differential in age. Um, but my older brother is two years older. So we all kind of hung out together and just looked up to him completely. Like he was always mm -hmm. an artist from from even a really early age. I remember looking through his sketches and we uh, ironically all loved comic books. So <laughs> my brother and this friend's name was Alan uh, would draw and like write their own comic books. And I kind of, I couldn't draw at all. So I would just like <laughs> help write slash uh, observe them drawing, which was, was great. And we didn't hang out all the time, but it, it was enough that, uh, well, number one, like the infrequency of it, I think seeing him made it really special mm. uh, when we were together and always kind of just picked up like nothing had happened, uh, which funny enough, my brain's going all over the place now, but a couple of years ago, two years ago, maybe we saw him again after not having seen him for maybe 10 years. And oh, wow. Me and my, my brother and I were like, oh, this, this might be weird. I don't know how it's going to go. <laughs> and uh, same thing. Like we kind of just picked up where we left off. Hell yeah. Really wonderful. But he, one day, so as we're getting older, we're making comic books. We also like shared music and he got into punk pretty early. And at the same time, my brother and I were listening to like Blink-182 and things like that. And he brought a guitar over and it was like a Fender. It's kind of like a, uh, it's the color I'm looking for here. <laughs> It's like a purplish red Fender Strat, basically. Okay. And I just remember touching it and being like, this is it. The minute I touched it, that was it. That's awesome. I, uh, I, have, to, I have to share my same story. Uh, I was homeschooled growing up, and uh, we had those encyclopedias that my mom would order from like the homeschooling conventions. And... Uh, this only went up to about the late 90s or even like the mid 90s, these encyclopedias. So there was like a four volume set of music and it would go through, you know, Beethoven, all the OG guys and lead up to like through the Beatles, the 50s, 60s. And then it ended with Nirvana. And there's a picture of Kurt Cobain on the In Utero tour playing that. It's I'm not sure if it was a Stratocaster, um, whatever guitar, like his like pinkish guitar that he played on that tour. And I saw him and I was like, Mom. I want to play guitar. <laughs> it was like this big on the piece of, on the paper on like the encyclopedia. And there was just so much attitude and like that guitar just looked so cool. He looked, he had like that weird cardigan on. Uh, I was like, I really want to learn guitar. Can I get some lessons? And my mom had been trying to teach me piano for a long time. It didn't really take and guitar just, you know, I exploded with it. I loved it so much. Um, and I had never even heard Nirvana before. So then my guitar teacher's like, oh, you're here because of Nirvana? Do you know what smells like Teen Spirit? And I had never heard it. And he just played it acoustically. He didn't even have an amp. He had an acoustic guitar and just that riff, and I was hooked. So uh, I don't know. Maybe it's super that's, basic that that's, that's like Nirvana no, yeah, is my intro. <laughs> no, that's amazing. That's all it takes, though. I, I, think there's, I think there is some magic in that and some, like... I don't know destiny or something totally when it, when it comes to those stories and like how how people find their way to these things so now that you are a, a guitarist for you know multiple bands obviously a super creative person um, I also kind of I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about 
you know, we don't have to get too nitty gritty with it, but as far as the actual act of, um, you know, you have nothing, uh, there's like nothing in front of you. There's maybe an idea in your head when it comes to a musical, I don't know, riff or song or whatever. Is there a, if you, if you would not mind just like walking us through your process of like how you get even just a, for lack of a better way to put it, like a musical sketch. Um, I'm sorry, I'm like relating everything in visual art, but um, yeah, if, if that makes sense. No, I'm loving the comparison. <laughs> okay. Um, I think when, when I think of my process, I think it's important to, again, kind of like, demystify this whole thing mm. when it comes to me it's like zooming out and and going to the actual root of how these things begin and for me it is often just like a single riff and mm. it might it might be a five second thing and whatever that five second thing is if it's compelling enough to kind of like capture my attention and makes me feel like there's something about it that's new or that's different again kind of going back to this idea of being dropped in a new world it's like oh something about this 10 note thing uh makes me feel like i'm in a new space and mm. makes me excited and makes me want to go somewhere mm. and once i have that then it's just a building process like and it's really just all pure imaginative like conjecture at this point it's like well what could I, what could come before this what could come after this okay what tonally is like related to this that could maybe come later in the song and then now i have to like build a bridge to this other big idea that i have mm. um and of course when it comes to music it's like rhythmically how can i change this how should i envision the drums like what different patterns could we play over top of this and i mm. think going from that that space of that single riff to the end product is like miles and miles of road that you have to travel <laughs> and endless hours but i think um when it comes to the music that we make everything just kind of happens in layers and it's like sometimes i'll have an idea and then i think about it and i i tend to do this a lot where like if i have a single riff idea or something i'll actually listen to I'll like record it and listen to it like walking around like, mm. school so like a lot of my commutes to school are either reading a book or <laughs> uh listening to music that we're working on yeah. and hearing it in new spaces and with different considerations and like in a way like actively writing away from from the actual instrument from the from the playing and i think there's so many of my songs have been written in that way where it's like i'm not actually anywhere near my guitar i'm like walking around and suddenly a song's in my mind and i'm singing the riff in my head and i'm like oh wait this could be cool and I have hundreds and hundreds of files on my phone of me like singing a riff into the phone of like what I think could come after this thing mm. that I have, right? So I think always without fail, it starts with some kind of little seed and then that seed is either something before it or something after, layers get added. Once I bring something to the other people in the band, very often like, and this is the really fun part I think about being in a band, there will be times where a someone will hear it and love it and then have another idea to add on to it or b hear it and be like this is cool but it could do this instead and mm. then this this thing i never even considered with this original riff could happen that completely transforms everything and then of course when it comes to music like our process as a band we have the luxury of uh the audio engineer being in the band so a lot of times we'll have songs ready to go we record them and then we have infinite time and space to kind of add layers and envision like what would happen if we added this part over it or this part or this part so ultimately uh it really is quite a journey from from that beginning process but so much of it is kind of just like singing the song in my head and mm seeing what could come next and experimenting with what can come next and pulling things from from god knows where to <laughs> assemble assemble all of this so then if going into that journey then cause the miles and miles long road of you kind of working within that context of that new thing do you ever find that 
you sometimes get uh, whatever the saying is for, uh, forest for the trees or like you can't really see your way from the be you can't see where you came from and you can't see how to get out of it if that makes sense uh yes 100%. okay cool so and i'm not alone <laughs> no no and i i imagine any any person doing creative work has the same experiences where like sometimes like in my case with songwriting sometimes you sit down and a song is suddenly there within an hour and you're like okay and that's it you wrap mm -hmm. it up and it's gone and then other times we've been working on songs for years and they're not done or they <laughs> appear suddenly years later in like a new form mm -hmm. so um the first the the song that's going to open off uh, the, our next record for example has existed in some form since like 2016 or 2015 I think. oh that's cool so i think that is to be expected when you're in the creative process is like it just happens and like sometimes certain seeds aren't ready to grow yet and like mm -hmm. you need a, need a different kind of of ground a different kind of space and half the time that's just because i think you as the creator aren't there yet like you aren't in a space to make it happen yet and you're kind of applying like old tools to and old ways and patterns of being to uh to a creation that requires things that you haven't even arrived at yet you know and i think that is part of i try to remember when it comes to the frustration of writing song that that usually is what it is it's like i am not at a place musically yet that i can make this happen mm. and maybe that will come with time or come with like an evolution in thinking and experience and it always does it that's, always does that's really encouraging to hear because i have this um sci-fi project that i've been working on for a long time and the visuals like the the aesthetic uh you know just looking at like a movie poster vibe is absolutely perfect. It's like 100% complete. Everything, art always, the concepts. I have pages and pages of just concept art of like different tanks that will be in this book, you know. But the uh, the emotional and like uh, deep deepening, uh, like that magical part of a story that makes people kind of want to reach out and connect, hopefully with the world around them when they're finished reading it, it's just not there yet. Um, and, you know, it's a story that involves a lot of like, um, you know, generational and generational concepts of like love and what happens to us after we go and then the legacy that we leave behind. And it's so big. It's kind of like, like, uh, obnoxiously Lord of the Rings big. Um, and every time I try and attack it, I, uh, I kind of like tumble out of it, you know, like I go in and I'm wrestling and I'm wrestling and, you know, you have those creative sweats where you're not actually sweating, but you just can't sleep at night. Um, and it just kind of kicks your ass and it's like later, it just like pushes you out of it. And I almost sometimes feel like I'm window shopping in a store that I can't afford anything. Uh, I'm looking through my sketchbooks of all these like badass drawings that I made with no soul. Um, so I really appreciate that your uh, kind of take on that because uh, I feel exactly the same way. There are stories that are in my head that I know are good. They're somewhere in there, but I need more. I, it's kind of like you said, it's like um, I need my life to compress. I need more stuff to compress down so that whenever whatever comes out <laughs> of all that BS that I've been going through or we're, we're all going through can turn into some sort of, for me, storytelling. But uh I guess, but music also is storytelling too, I would think. So, yeah. No, it, it definitely is. And I think so talking about emotion and like the spirit, I think sometimes like there is some type of evolution that you need to go through personally to like. You back. Know. <laughs> I had to switch to a phone, unfortunately. Awesome. So to kind of go back into kind of your space a little bit more talking about kind of the creative process behind horrendous you know i i again i'm relating it back to my own experience but i found that sometimes in my genre of uh comic creating and storytelling that um genre fiction you know like with sword sorcery sci-fi things sometimes can feel a little bit um it can feel like i'm a little boxed in um and 
it can be frustrating for me sometimes because I want to do things that are maybe outside the norm of what you'd find in like a, pardon me, a comic book store. Um, but at the same time, I'm also kind of in that zone and that's like what I'm known for. It's like kind of my brand. So there are times where I'm like kind of pushing against the thing, the, the, the fences of things that I actually like really love. And I was wondering, I feel like this is a thing in metal where uh, metal is kind of like supposed to be one way and it's like it's got to be brutal and it has to be about whatever, any sort of thing. But I feel like when I listen to Horrendous, a lot of the it's I feel like it's kind of doing it's, it's kind of pushing against those boundaries a little bit. And maybe I maybe I'm reading too much into the music, but there are some like choruses and some like epic solos in there that don't necessarily scream like death metal to me if, if that makes sense and i was wondering if you had any thoughts on you know as you're kind of going into this creative process like do you ever fear, feel yourself kind of bucking the metal trend and if that's a hindrance to you or exciting to you or your thoughts on that oh, yeah we are, we are very intentional about like uh shaking off kind of death metal expectations <laughs> um and it, it's something we really enjoy doing and i think it doesn't always pay off for us because I, I think especially with like kind of the, the current climate of where death metal is like that often makes a lot of people not listen to us. And, mm. but we're kind of at peace with that at this point. And I think for us, again, it's kind of back to this idea of like, how can we continue to push ourselves? What have we not done with our music and how can we expand this, this universe of sound? while still sounding like us and kind of making it our own way. And mm. I think there's something really fun about being able to do that. And like, cause I, especially when, we're, when you're talking about music, like there are so many bands, I think that when they're incorporating music from different styles or different genres, it's like, it just sounds like metal that suddenly drops in like a jazz part or metal that suddenly <laughs> drops in like, I don't know. An electronic dance beat or something and you're like mm. this is it's so corny when it's just like cut and paste like that and i think mm. when it comes to us we're much more about borrowing ideas and borrowing like approaches to an instrument or approaches to songwriting or approaches to like a style or something and and making them work in the metal world to a point where i i think a lot of people don't always catch those things or, or would be shocked to like discover where these things are coming from. You know? it's like, like, yeah, you, you would never guess like what actually gave us the idea to kind of take this approach. And kind of, as I was saying earlier about where we're at with our sound at this point, like I, I do think we just arrived at a space where we really aren't, I can't name many things that the, our music sounds like at this point other than us there there are certainly influences and there are certainly like histories that we're drawing from and those are inescapable but i i don't think that we sound much like anybody else at this point which is mm. to me our greatest success so i uh i have to agree with you um i think that um horrendous and i'm not just blowing smoke up your ass here uh, like you guys do sound different than like every other metal band out there, especially death metal. Um, you know, I, I've, I've listened to a lot of aggressive music and um, there's a reason that I, I keep coming back to your records. Um, and especially with Idol, um, your latest record, um, that record, it's, it, it's so rewarding because it is, it's, it feels like a very positive maze. Um, kind of like it, it's it's a it's a record that invites you to get lost in and you really have to wrestle with and it i feel like in some ways and i hope i'm not like getting too woo woo here but it's like it's almost like that record is like it's like a it's you know when like you have to spend time with a record and you are trying to figure it out so hard that it actually like becomes a part of you if that makes sense could you speak to that a little bit if that was like an intention no that that is definitely part of it and i think the funny thing about that record is like we didn't really set out to make it that way so much as 
like the the experience you're describing listening to the record is the experience we had making the album like it felt like a maze to us it felt like a labyrinth and Mm. we were at this space where coming after anaretta like we kind of felt like we had taken what we did on on ecstasis to kind of its logical conclusion and in my eyes perfected that sound Mm. which is funny to say because when i hear those two records back to back like i actually don't think they're that crazily similar to each other um but i think philosophically like we were definitely still in the same mindset that we were from ecstasis as we approached santa reda and and i think came up with the perfection of that idea so when it came to do idols like how do we make this bigger badder better crazier more complex and doing that record really was at every moment kind of a test of all of our abilities and i think Mm. when it came to the songwriting as we're trying to like create these obscene like movements and things like that like we we did get lost in it and we got lost and recording it and we got lost in constantly trying to make things more complex while at the same time it's always been a goal of ours like no matter how progressive or like technical things get to always maintain that soul because Mm. i for me growing up listening to metal and listening to progressive rock and things like that like there's this clear line in my mind and, and in my ears anyway when I'm listening to things like this where it's like it ceases to be a song and it's from that point forward it's just like technical playing and it's like yeah. I'm listening to someone play as opposed to listening to like a song so yes. I think that was kind of the screen for the challenge of Idol mm. um, like having this technicality having this pushing ourselves to the limits at every second while still making songs that is so cool. And it's interesting to hear you talk about the creative process behind that and how it kind of was a maze. And actually one of the reasons that I wanted to specifically ask you about that kind of forest through the trees thing is I feel like if it were to ever happen in a horrendous uh, record, it would happen during Idol. I don't know if that ever happened to you guys as a band, um, but it I can only imagine how challenging that record must have been to make. I, I, am I wrong? <laughs> It was a lot. And it was okay. also just the time, I think multiple band members, like myself included, personally, were just like going through it too. Mm-hmm. With like work and career stuff and like family shit. So all of that. And of course, that was like right when the Trump years were starting mm-hmm. pretty much. So all of this, this like maelstrom of, of internal and external stressors and insanity was going on kind of as that record was happening and of course we made it through and i I think the record is very much a product of of all those struggles and and all of that like desperation um but unfortunately seemingly that kind of like happens almost every time like i i wouldn't say we've ever had a record that was like easy to make other Mm -hmm. than maybe the first record like the chills i don't recall ever being difficult okay um and even on the newest album like again i don't recall being as stressed out by the stuff we're working on now as i was during idol but the newest record we're working on now has has undergone like multiple rewrites multiple concepts things have been thrown out songs that like were 10 minutes long have been cut down to like four (laughs) so there's just been this like unreal shift in philosophy and kind of approach throughout the past couple of years of us making this record and in a way I, I guess it's I've never there was definitely like moments of hopelessness during Idol like the creation mm. and specifically the recording of Idol like now that I'm thinking about it I always forget this but most of the songs on Idol were recorded and then scrapped because like they weren't good enough or we didn't like the tempo so like Almost every track on that record was recorded probably two or three times. Oh my god! So it was like so Holy much effort. And like I just remember going down to record with my brother, and we'd like spend a whole weekend. It'd be like ten hours a day 
working on shit then we'd listen to it on the way home in the car and just be like crying like we have to oh. figure this shit out like this is not it oh. so oh, that hurts my heart yes yeah, so the actual like recording process of that was by far the worst whereas this time around it's like partly because of covid and because of how much time we've had it's been more of like a reconceptualization in terms of writing the songs and kind of okay. like extra work in writing the songs um, and not so much like recording issues this time around, which is great. Um, the recording's been long, but there hasn't been that same like hopelessness and like we okay. have to do this again and again. It's just kind of been morphing a lot more than our material does often. Well, I'm sorry to hear about the uh, the the recording and creative woes during Idol, but it's like it's becoming, I think, my my favorite. A horrendous record it was on aretta for a while um but man i love listening to idol and um i guess it kind of gives me hope in my own work as well because i have never really had a project that's been easy i always think that the next time i go around to like making a new mini series of whatever i'll be like oh you know what i've done this before i know how to do this and every single time it knocks me on my ass and i'm in the middle of it i'm in like issue three of six and I'm lying awake at night being like, this doesn't work. This is terrible. Uh, having to redraw pages or realign a story beat and then thus redrawing specific pages within the context of an issue and so on. So that gives me hope that, you know, uh, it's not just comic book artists that are um, <laughs> hustling and trying to make it work. Um, but I know that uh, your time is precious. I have two more questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, you are a musician, of course, and a creative person, but it's not your main gig. It's not the thing, I guess, that would like pay the bills. You are actually a teacher, correct? That is correct. Okay. Yeah. You are an English teacher for high school. Yeah. So I currently teach all 11th grade, but it's usually like 11th, 12th, sometimes okay. a little 10th thrown in there. So I was actually wondering, and if I'm totally off base here, just let me know. But I also was a teacher for a little while. And one thing that I had to create, like out of nothing was curriculum. And I was wondering if you have any sort of uh, mindset approaches, or if you take a joy or pride in like making new curriculum for your students, and if you find that to be a creative process, or if it's more of a job job. <laughs> I definitely think there's there's an equal amount of creativity there and i think for me personally like i music is is my true love so that that always feels more creative to me and i think like, i don't know if i want to say more rewarding but um sorry there's like Arm armageddon is happening in, in these parts um, oh dude you're totally fine this is like what it's about I, I don't want people to like <laughs> but, uh, get a yeah, perfect yeah. recording set up. Um, I just but... want it to be natural and chill. That's what this is about. Nothing else. I, I hear the, the natural sounds of, of life. Um, <laughs> but uh, what was I saying? So for, for creativity in school, like I do think there is a similar element. I think when you make that perfect like lesson or perfect like unit or something, and I'm an English teacher, so it's it's all reading and kind of based in literature and based in working with books and i think when you make that that perfect thing that connects with students like it, it does feel really amazing and it's, it's really rewarding but i found honestly i've had a shift kind of in educational like philosophy i guess maybe in perspective where like i in the past when i'm starting out i was kind of all about content and thinking about like how do i make this thing interesting or how do I make it fun? And I've been much more acutely aware now of like a creative approaches to like being in the classroom, yeah. which is kind of a weird thing to say, but more of like, how am I interacting with people? And like, how am I presenting information and how, what kind of environment am I like making for people? And what kind of expectations are there and like what what systems am i working within and how do i take those into account and i i feel like this year in particular especially after covid it's like so many veils were lifted on like what i mean 
and what the world is really. But for me with education specifically, it's been veils of like, why do we do the things we do? And, and why, why are our days structured the way they are in our classes? And why am I, why is my curriculum the way it is? And mm. so I think for me, the creativity has, has been entering much more like abstract phases than it used to, which I'm pretty happy with actually. And I, I feel like it's been a big shift and a positive shift, at least for me as a, as a teacher and thinking of these things, because ultimately I'm kind of in a space now where it's like, I don't, the content is almost like the least important thing in my mind now. Whereas when I was starting, it was like, make great stuff and the rest will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like every other aspect of, of the job has become more of a highlight than that. That's a really cool outlook. Um, I feel like we need more teachers like you. <laughs> well, it's a, it's, it's a very bizarre and demanding job. So I, it is crazy. I remember sucks. my years teaching. It was, it was so hard. <laughs> I think that's a shame of it is that so many people like get burnt out quickly and it isn't always a, especially depending where you are, it's not always a career or like a, a path that, that is sustainable, I think. Mm. Um, I, I also question like how long I can, I can be in it. I'm, I'm still feeling pretty good, but kind of circling back to the, the talk of creativity, I actually think that part of the reason I am so comfortable in, in teaching is that I have these other outlets. It's like I, if teaching's ever bad on a given day or like, given week or a given month as it sometimes is i always kind of have this other world to fall back into and, and to put my energy into and to to dream about really it's all in my eyes it's all about the dream it's like how no matter how bad like work can get or life can get it's, i have this dream to kind of just sit back into and live in for a while and i think that has helped me so much so that is awesome. A creative escape. And uh, I'll also tack on to that fellow creators. We have a lot of people who make comics uh, that like watch the channel and kind of interact. Um, you know, they are a little bit in your position where a lot of them have like day jobs and they're working in uh, working in, on their comics on the side. And it's kind of the same thing for them. There's like a dream that they're working on and they're hustling for and not a dream in the sense of like, I have a dream to be a comic book artist someday, but just like you were saying, like a dreaming of different worlds of creativity, having a place to go that's separate from this regular life. And um, I know there are also people who listen to the channel that uh, do comics like full time, like as their day job. And, you know, I am one of them. Um, but it's cool because music for me, I, I've been playing guitar since I was 11, is uh kind of like music is for you and that it is a bit of an escape for me from uh the drawing board if that makes sense um being a creative person and like paying the bills with uh art sometimes gets in the way of creativity so it's important to step away from it it's not obviously anywhere near as hard as teaching but it's like it's a thing that pays the bills which comes with, with complications and one thing I've always appreciated about music, listening to it and especially making it is exactly what you said, having a dream to escape to. That is an awesome way to put it and an awesome way to think end it. Um, dude, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I have this thing where um, I was wondering if my guests wouldn't mind as like a goodbye just to say like something that they're listening to or something that's getting them excited to make stuff. It could be a book could be a movie could be an album anything that you are looking forward to engaging with and is helping you kind of get that spark of maybe making something if that makes sense okay uh so also before we go number one thanks for having me of course and i, I would do this anytime you want uh of course number oh, two on. <laughs> i i feel like you you are like a bigger fan of idol than anyone i've met so it makes me really happy because i think <laughs> As you said, I do think like there is kind of like homework with that record. Like mm -hmm. you can't just kind of sit and listen to it. And I think that has resulted in a lot of people just simply not listening to it <laughs> or liking, knowing that they like some aspect about it because they like the band, but like they haven't quite gotten to the center of it yet. And it makes me happy to like 
not feel crazy in that sense of like, no, it is really good. And Dude, it's a it just requires a lot more work to, to get into. And I mean, we kind of feel this when we go back and listen to it, we're like, what the hell were we like doing during this time? <laughs> what is, what is going on? Um, but to answer your question, I think the, the biggest thing for me, I'm actually reading uh, Gravity's Rainbow, which is by Thomas. I never know how to say his last name. I've heard like Sam Schoen, I've heard Pynchon, um, <laughs> but I, he's, he's one of my favorite writers has always been, and I, I've always been kind of afraid to read this book because it's like 900 pages long and <laughs> incredibly dense. So it's like sometimes all one page might take me like five or six minutes to actually read and get through. And I'm like, oh, dang. Okay. So it's like, it's both a cruel and like intimidating thing to engage with, but also his writing is just like so incredibly next level. And like just the way that the way that he writes, he's he's kind of one of like the the bigger early postmodernist writers and so the way that he structures his, his thinking and his, his work is really stimulating for me. And I, I kind of feel like a, a similarity in how my brain tends to work. And it's, it's almost like reading this book is what like switches off, switches on all the light switches in my mind and like creates all the pathways and like links them up. And I feel sometimes reading this book, making all these connections like historical connections cultural connections and like creative connections within the story itself that i feel energized by it right i feel like i've just had a cup of coffee or something during like reading this book and, and that yeah. is often what gets me kind of in the mood to to create and of course there's other times where i sit the town to read it and i'm like three pages in and 25 minutes have gone by and i'm like utterly defeated but that, that can happen with any book though yes but that book has been a lot for me recently and musically i don't think if i've had any like newer obsessions uh i feel like i can just do we i went to a record store the other day and for whatever reason i've always loved ozzy osbourne but i never got into no rest for the wicked and <laughs> Ended up buying that CD for like five bucks. It was like, it's got to be at least half decent. And I've been loving it. It's like definitely not one of his best, but great moments. And it's been nice to like kind of have, I feel like those older metal records like that or like old Iron Maiden, Juice Priest or something like carry this magic in them that has never really been done again. And I think mm. being able to pick up that record and not being that familiar with it and feeling that magic again for the first time with like things of i don't know when i heard like peace of mind for the first time or something and being able to access that as someone who's been listening to metal for god 20 some years at this point has been really fun where it's like yes like the, this ozzy spirit is here that like i love so much and it's songs that i don't know because i haven't really heard this so much so that's been wow. exciting for me that's awesome. As a last, also as a last thing, anything that you would like to plug or send people to, or something that you about horrendous or the silver that you'd like to uh, drop, anything like that. I would say uh, definitely go listen to the silver. That would be amazing because I, I want more people to hear it. Um, the album's called Ward of Roses. It came out in October fifteenth. And for Horrendous, we should be releasing something hopefully by the summer. So we're kind of uh, finishing that up. But more news on that later, I guess. Awesome. Matt, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to uh, come onto the show and hang out and talk about creativity and stuff. Dude, it means so much. Hey, as always, happy to do it. I feel like there's so much more to be said as well. So perhaps there'll be a part two down the road or something. Let's make it happen. So, that's that. I want to thank Matt again for coming on. What an incredible time. Uh, I was really nervous. I, I was not lying. This is like the first time I've ever done anything like this. Um, I have had all this crazy stuff going on in my life lately, and I didn't even get to prepare as much as I wanted to. But I did it. We did it. Um, it went really well. Uh, Matt felt really good about it. We texted a little bit after. I want to thank him so much again for coming on. Seriously, I'm so jazzed. Uh, one of my favorite bands on the show. So cool. Um, 
Really quick before we go, a few logistical things for me. I have a book up for pre-order. It's called WrestleTober 2. It's all of the wrestling drawings that I did for the month of October 2021. It is up for pre-order at my shop. There's a link below. There's also a link to buy the uh, a link to a pre-order for WrestleTober 1, which came out in 2019. The second printing is going to be available as uh, I'm all sold out of the first one. And those will be shipping hopefully sometime in mid-December. I want to thank everybody for your support, and we'll see you whenever I can get to another interview. I'm hoping that it will be sooner rather than later.